Hello everybody and welcome back to the OnFab podcast. Today we're going to be discussing the potential Jadon Sancho move to Manchester United. What will this deal look like? Will this deal happen? And does Sancho want this deal to happen himself? I'm currently recording this on the 16th of August, the Sunday. Um, of course, this is all still rumour as I'm recording this as well. I'm hopefully going to bring this out potentially even the day of recording, a Sunday or um, hopefully Monday um Hopefully, definitely by though that by those two days, uh, because obviously this is a very fast moving transfer. Every day we seem to have new uh, pieces of information around this deal. More uh, come, more things coming from Dortmund, more things coming from Manchester United, and more things coming from the people in the middle, the media uh, being the main one uh, there as well. So we're hearing a lot about this deal. Um, will this happen? Will this not happen? Uh, we hear about this on Twitter, on Instagram, and just generally in social media all the time around this but the main things we're going to be talking about today is what this deal will look like for Manchester United is this Manchester United deal with Jadon Sancho going to happen what will this deal look like for Manchester United I think ultimately it shows ambition towards Manchester United it shows ambition of uh, where Manchester United want to go as a football club do they want to stay in third, fourth, fifth, sixth Europa League football, Thursday night football? Of course, they finished in the Champions League places this season, which is fantastic for them. Um, fantastic just generally and also financially, um, of course, as well. But, you know, do they want to stay and, you know, just fight for top four and, and, and fight for top six every year? Or do they want to push for the title? Do they want to get back to the glory days of Manchester United? Do they want to be successful again? Um and continue being successful on a sustainable and consistent basis. That's the important thing as well. Showing ambition will be, you know, will be ultimately bringing some of the best players in the world to your football club, and then using those players in the right way. Not just bringing in the best football, twenty of the best footballers living on the planet to Manchester United. One, because that's not physically possible. Financially, it's not physically possible, and also that it wouldn't work. But what I'm trying to say is bringing in the right recruitment. I emphasise the word right there for a good reason. Three, is it three managers or four managers since uh, Sir Alice Ferguson left? Of course, we've had Di Maria flops, we've had Schneidlin, Feinsteiger, um, all these different sort of flop transfers that just simply haven't worked. On paper, fantastic players. Schneidlin was fantastic at Southampton. Feinsteiger, of course, is a legend of the game. Di Maria, fantastic at Real Madrid, comes to Manchester United, doesn't work at all. Will, will Sergio Sancho be like this? I don't think he will. I honestly don't think he will. No one can really say. No one knows exactly what it's going to be like. Of course, until you play, you don't know. But what I'm trying to say is, is this the right recruitment for Manchester United? And is this the right deal for them? If you ask anyone, any Manchester United fans, they will say yes. And I have to agree as well. Um, it's a big statement for the football club if this Sancho deal comes off. It, ultimately, the aim and the ambition of this football club is to close the gap uh, You know, from being a Champions League uh, Europa League side closing that 20 point gap between them and Liverpool they would have hated to see Liverpool win the Premier League title Manchester United fans they would have hated to see Manchester United, Manchester City win the title as well um, you know the two years before that as well the last three years specifically has been awful for Manchester United fans in terms of title watching their rivals um, win the title in front of them and they're just not in the party you know they might have come second um, with Jose Mourinho that year, but they were never really in to win the league. You know, it was second. It sounds like close, but it wasn't that close. Uh, Manchester United, Manchester City simply ran away with it, much like Liverpool did. And Manchester City were behind by you know quite a few points, but still behind them. Um, and I think that's what Manchester United ultimately want to do. They want to close that gap. They want to show that they're not just going to be a team of top four, top six hungry, um, to hungry football club. They want to be competing at the highest level. Well, they are obviously are at the highest level, but in terms of highest level, in terms of Champions League semi-finals, Champions League quarter-finals, just being in the Champions League and not just being that outside team that you know gets out the group stage as a lucky little round. Maybe they draw the underdog, win the game, and then get knocked out. In the next round of the Champions League, being in the Champions League and actually being competitive in the Champions League, pushing for titles in the Premier League. It's not going to be an easy job. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going in the right direction, coming top four in his first full season in charge. is not a bad statement um, and not a bad sort of introduction of your first season. Is it really an introduction? Of course, being a legend at a club, I don't know. But, you know, introduction, you know what I mean? Introduction is Manchester United manager. Um, to come in top four, coming third is not a bad year for them in terms of what it's like in regards to, you know, looking at it from other points of view. It's the worst ever point, um, amount of points you need to get to be in the top four. They were not lucky to be in the top four. They worked very hard post-lockdown, brought in Bruno, everything changed. But, I'm trying to say is, you know, they didn't exactly, you know, 
any other year, Manchester United's points probably would have got them sixth or seventh, maybe fifth. You know, this year it's gone third. So it just shows the drop-off between Manchester City and Liverpool. And we'll come back to that. We'll probably do a podcast specifically on those sort of teams. But, you know, you know what I mean? Just kind of close that gap between being a team of, um, you know, 20 points um, separating them from Liverpool. Um, that isn't what they want. They want to be competing. Of course they do. It's Manchester United. How much is this deal going to cost and what this deal do? You know, it's easy to say what Jadon Sancho would bring to Manchester United if he was to join. It's not going to be free. 120 million euros. That's 120 million euros. That's a lot of money. A huge amount of money. Not just in, you know, I say real life. Um, you know, football is real life. But in terms of footballing money, 120 million euros is not cheap. It would break the poor Pogba existing transfer record at Manchester United. It'd be 80 million short, I think, isn't it? 80 million short of the, the Neymar to PSG um, transfer budget. You know, uh, sorry, transfer record. It's going to have to be done in installments with this sort of coronavirus market. You know, 70 to 30 to 20 um, in installments. You know, they're not, they don't have the 120 million pounds in this market to just go and spend 120 million pounds straight away on a player. I don't think anyone does. Even Chelsea don't. Um, and look what they're doing. But, you know... It's going to have to be done in the right way. And I think that's that's where it's going a little bit wrong at the moment. It's trying everything they can to lower that initial first instalment. Is it possible to lower the overall fee of the transfer? I don't know. But £70 million, even just £70 million, is still a lot of money in this market as well. Lots of clubs have suffered. All clubs have suffered, really, from the coronavirus and the money being brought in. So £70 million is a lot of money to spend um, in that first instalment. Um, and I don't think Manchester United really want to do that. I think they would rather, you know, do 50. And then, you know, the other instalments to add up to the 120. Do I think that 120 will drop off? To be honest with you, it's Borussia Dortmund. I just don't think they will. I think he's a 19 Englishman who has done so well at Borussia Dortmund and so well in the Bundesliga that I just don't think you can say that under, lower than 120, from Dortmund's point of view, 120 million pounds is ever going to be accepted. Going in there with, wasn't it, there was a rumour they went in with like a 50 million pound bid, but uh, uh, bid, no instalments added. Now, they would have been laughed at, you know, and then they probably came back 120 million euros, and they're just not budging from that. Lots of negotiations work. We'll start with that fee. We'll lower, lower, lower. For Dortmund, it seems like you're having a laugh, mate. 120 million euros. You try and say, we want this. They're like, nope. You try and say, well, we can do this. Nope. 120 million euros. Close the door. Accept it or go away. They are willing to do instalments, but it's about that first instalment and how they can lower that first instalment. Seems like I'm repeating the word instalment a lot. But trying to uh, lower that initial overall fee of the transfer. That is what Manchester United want to do. Does Manchester United and does, does Sancho want this deal to happen to Manchester United? You know, it's easy to say, right, you're 120 million pounds through instalments. You can start speaking to Manchester United. And Jane and Sancho goes, nope, I want to stay in Germany. Many sources suggest that Manchester United are frustrated at agent fees and wage demands. But others say he's happy to join. And he's just waiting to, for Dortmund to accept the offer. You know, are Dortmund going to sit there and just reject an outpriced Manchester United every time? And, you know, Sanchez sat there frustrated. We see all these video, you know, posts on Instagram and Twitter, Dortmund's Twitter and Instagram, you know. It's all smiles with Jadon Sancho and, you know, he's having a nice little cup of coffee with Jude Bellingham, his English friend. He's just joined from Birmingham. You know, and he all looks happy at Dortmund, you know, training all that. You know, named in their named in their preseason squad, and um, you know who have gone. I don't know where they've gone, but they've been named in the preseason squad. Uh, you know, he, he, you know he's all happy at Dortmund, or is this just a way of Dortmund going? Well, we're not going to accept any of these deals until Manchester United accept. I'm um, sorry, bring in an acceptable offer of what they believe is 120 million euros. Uh, and I think honestly, the only way this deal is going to really sort of start sort of going forward in a positive direction quickly is if Sancho pushes the move himself. We saw it with Usman Dembele when Barcelona came knocking, you know, a couple of years ago now. Look, Barcelona are interested in you. We've, ex we've rejected. And he goes, no, you're not rejecting it. I want to go to Barcelona. And then he goes to Barcelona. Sancho, really, the only way that's going to happen is if Sancho does the same sort of thing as well. You know, or is, is Sancho just happy to reject, uh, see Dortmund reject offers for him and you know, price United you know, out of a move and then keep Sancho for another year? And that's what Michael Zorg says, their director of football. You know, he's happy to stay at Dortmund and, you know, he's, he loves it here and we love him and all that sort of thing as well. But, you know, he said that about Dembele and then a week later he went to Barcelona. You know, is this just a PR spin in a way not to panic Dortmund fans? And, you know, the Dortmund fans are probably thinking, oh, God, Manchester United are in for him. And, you know, apparently this is happening. Apparently they're in, you know, talks of contracts. I don't think they are, to be honest with you. I really don't. I generally just do think that first sort of 
fee situation is the thing that's really stopping them. But I think you know it, it's like any football club. I'm a football. I'm you know I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of Oxford United. I know this is a completely different scale, a much lower scale. But when you hear all these clubs are interested in your player, you do panic, and the you know you think oh he's going to go. You know what I mean? And you hear these big names. You know for us Newcastle are interested in our you know our captain. You know, and you think well of course he's going to want to go to Newcastle. You know of course he's want to go there. Um, you know, it's not going to be a case of that. It's going to be a case of are we going to accept the offer? Are we, we're going to have to be going to be forced to accept an offer because it's such a good um, offer there um, that they're putting on the table? Or you know, is or is our player going to be willing to ha- you know willing to stay at, uh, at Oxford and be happy with that? And it's the same with Sancho. Is Sancho happy to say to Dortmund, look, I'll stay here for another year? You know, you can you can reject every offer. They can come in with three hundred million pounds, and you can you know you can accept it all you like. I'm just going to reject the contracts. I don't want it. You know, I want I'm going to I'm going to ask for a ridiculous wage demand. You know, does Sancho want this move? That's the important thing as well. If I'm being completely honest, I think he does. I think there's a lot of rumours going out that he's homesick. For example, I don't think you know you know he wants to go back to Germany. He wants to prove himself in England. Um, you know, he couldn't do it at Manchester City. He's never given the opportunity to do that. But I think he does want to do that at Manchester United. I think he does want to come to England and show everybody that he can do it in England. He's done it so fantastically well in the Bundesliga. Can he do it in the Premier League? And, you know, that's the that's the situation that we are currently on here at Sancho. Uh, currently sort of seeing here at Sancho is there's a lot of issues regarding the instalments. There's a lot of issues regarding... Are Manchester United going to put in an acceptable offer for Dortmund to say, yeah, we're happy for that to happen? Or is this going to be a case of we're going to reject, 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 um, and we're going to basically price him out of a move and say, no, we're not going to have anything under £20 million. You know, it could even be the case of Dortmund saying, look, these are the instalments. If you don't, you know, use these instalments that we've said to you, look, it's going to have to be a 70, 30, 20 million pounds. Um, Offer and if it's sorry, seventy euro, thirty euro, twenty euro offer. If that doesn't, if that you don't, if you don't meet that, if you don't do that, it's fine. We'll just keep Sancho. We're going to reject it. Or is Sancho going to go? Look, you can't hold me back. I've done so fantastically well for you at the Bund- in the Bundesliga for you at Dortmund. You know, you bought me for what six million pounds Manchester City. You're making a huge profit anyway. I want to go back to Manchester, but not the City one, the United one. Go to Manchester, and I want to go back to England. You know, I'm sure he's got family here in England. I'm sure he does. Come back here and be successful. You know, we've seen all these posts about him and Marcus Rashford getting along and all that sort of thing as well. He's English. He works with the English England squad as well. And you know, Harry Maguire. They mentioned I've got a lot of English players in their side. You know, he so he spends time with these players. He knows these players as well. I know it's just such a small thing, and I knew I know that. You know, he's not going to go right. Well, Harry Maguire wants me at Manchester United, so I'm going to. That's it. I want to go. You know, he does obviously want. He does need to want to go to Manchester United, but I think he does. It's on about Manchester United and Dortmund agreeing that deal. Manchester United don't want to be held to ransom. They don't want to be put forced into anything. They don't want to, you know, be panicked and worry into making a ridiculous offer that they're going to regret. Um, you know, you know, these are top quality businessmen. Edward Wood, the Glazers, they've had a lot of stick, but these are top quality businessmen. Edward Wood wouldn't have just walked into this Manchester United going, right, I ain't got a clue what I'm doing, but I'm here now, lads. Step away. I'm going to run the football inside of things. I ain't got a clue what I am doing in, in terms of negotiating, but I, I'm here, boys. Stand away. It's not going to be like that. He knows exactly what he's doing. Doing. The Glazers know exactly what they're doing. So, you know, they've got to try and find the best deal for Manchester United. And much as it might frustrate Manchester United fans, and you might say, oh, well, Manchester United, why don't we just ex- why don't we just do it? Why don't we just spend £120 million? It's not going to be as easy as that. We don't know how much Manchester United are willing to spend on Jadon Sancho. Perhaps they say, right, Ollie, we're, we're happy to go in for him, but, you know, we've only got £100 million, So we, the only way we're going to do it is if we find it for 120 Sorry, 100 instead of 120. So, you know, we just don't know the ins and out of this transfer yet. And that's why I'm going to try and bring this episode of the podcast out quite quickly um, because this is quite a fast moving topic and a quite fast moving transfer. Uh, but that's where I'm going to round things off is the tra- Jaden Sancho deal off podcast episode um, today. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this episode of the Young Fan Podcast. Hopefully, you enjoyed the last episode. Uh, thanks for the great support on that one. Um, hopefully, we're going to bring it out. Well, we will be bringing out lots of new podcast episodes on a quickly basis. Of course, there was a week delay between this one uh sorry the last one and this one hopefully that isn't and that won't happen again we're going to try and bring out the uh, lots of podcasts episodes of the podcast on the hot topics of english of the football world um and that is the plan going forward for the podcast um remember uh can you if you could subscribe to the uh young foot park young foot i'll say that again the young fan podcast youtube channel and all of that good stuff as well thank you very much uh, for listening and goodbye <laughs>